Hi guys, uh, I, I hope you are doing fine. Welcome to the second lecture of Galactic Dynamic lecture series. So just a quick revision. So in the last lecture, uh, we discussed a uh, certain numbers that uh, concerned our own galaxy Milky Way. And so there are about 10 to the power 11 stars and the gas, the, the mass of the gas that sits in the galaxy, it's about 10 to the power 10 solar masses. We also discussed that though there are so many stars that are in the galaxy, the collisions are very rare. We showed this using a very straightforward calculation and we came to a conclusion that uh, the collision of two stars would take about 10 to the power 19 years of time, which is much, much greater than the age of the galaxy itself. So it's not quite physical for two stars to really collide. Further, we discuss the a very general profile of, of the disk galaxy like our own Milky Way. Here is the profile uh, uh, of Milky Way. And then we discuss a little bit about the rotation curve that this curve right here uh, is what in the theory was proposed before 1950. But then this curve right here for the galaxy is what was observed. And then this discrepancy, this because as the mass would increase in the galaxy, the potential would increase and the rise in potential would cause rise in force and rise in force would call, cause larger velocities. So this is what was proposed in the theory and this is what was observed. Higher velocities were observed as one moved away from the radius, as one moved away in the radius. So on the x-axis we have the radius and on the y-axis we have the circular velocity. So as one moved away from the radius, there was rise, almost a constant uh, velocity was observed using a telescope, but which is much, much greater than what theory had proposed using the visible stars. So this extra velocity, meaning this extra mass that should be somewhere in, in the solar, in the galaxy that we are unable to see was accounted by saying that there is dark matter that sits in the outer part of the galaxy, in the halo of the galaxy. But today, let's move on. So today, I just wanted to revise certain formulas that we already know, like Poisson equation and cost theorem that I'm sure you guys must have studied in your graduate program. Further, we will talk a lot about circular velocity because circular velocity is very important. It's uh, like a stepping stone in galactic dynamics and it's also used in morphology study of uh, galaxies as well so it's very important in the end we'll solve a numerical related to potential energy a simple one and i hope uh, i'm able to make myself clear in that so okay so let's begin so right here it's a poison equation del square phi x equals 4 pi 0 x which is basically the double spatial derivative of potential of a given system equals 4 pi z times the mass distribution density of that system at that particular uh, space point. So basically, if you know a potential of any system, you just take a double spatial derivative and you can know the mass distribution of that system or vice versa. But if you know the density, you will have to integrate uh, that density to get the potential of the system back. Then we know Gauss theorem. So Gauss theorem basically, Gauss theorem in uh, galactic dynamics or in physics in general, in the gravitation physics comes by taking volume integral of the Poisson equation. So if you take volume integral of this term right here, the volume integral of density is of course mass total, which is trivial. So basically the mass contained within this volume that we are integrating over. And if we consider this term right here and take its uh, volume integral, so we can convert this divergence term into th this divergence over this term volume integral equals the surface integral of this delphi term which is right here in the bracket. We can do this by using Gauss theorem which is very famous in mathematics and in physics as well. So using this integrals, volume integrals, we get this and this right here, it's a very famous Gauss theorem in, in gravitation which basically states that the normal component of del phi integrated over a surface equals 4 pi z times the mass contained within that surface. So again, 
So this Gauss theorem right here, it's famous in uh, electricity and magnetism, it's famous in gravitation and it's, it's, it's a general theorem. Now let's move on to circular velocity. So for so circular velocity, it's given by this formula right here where R is the radius, how far the object sits from the system. And we see right here, it's a circular velocity and phi, it's the potential energy. So circular velocity, it's basically given for spherical systems in which uh, particles would really have meaningful circular velocities. But even if the system is non-spherical, but a particle sees it as a spherical system, one can apply this formula right here. For example, in the galaxy profile that we discussed in our last lecture right here, so suppose there is a particle in the disk galaxy that sits right over here, like our sun itself. So our sun sits at about r equals 8.5 kiloparsec, but at z equal to zero. Now, if you make z equal to zero in this particular density distribution, if z equals zero, then this term vanishes and our mass distribution now depends only on r. This means that the sun, which is at z equal to zero, sees the system, the galaxy, as a spherical system depending only on r. And since the density depends only on r, so will the potential. So one can find the circular velocity in such cases that how the object of which we are interested in calculating circular velocity sees the system. So for sun, just to give you a number, the circular velocity is about 220 km per second. Now this circular velocity led us to the rotation curve of the galaxies. So on the x-axis, it's the r and on the y-axis, we have the circular velocity. So before 1950, the theory, we, we, we had uh, the vision using our telescopes that our galaxy, it's, it's a disk shaped galaxy and for a disk shape and for the given mass and the potential would go as phi r equals one by r. This is how the VC, the circular velocities was modeled right here. If our galaxy had only been consisting of stars, but then what was observed was this blue curve right over here. So this means there was some extra potential giving rise to extra velocity that was observed, which had a discrepancy with our model that we had in 1950 or before that. So this extra potential, meaning this, this extra mass was accounted by blaming it to the dark matter that sits in our halo. So if had our uh, galaxy been consisting only of stars, we, we would have modeled the potential of the galaxy as 1 over r and we would obtain our vc using this formula as 1 over under root r but now since the galaxy looks almost constant the, the sorry the, the the vc the circular velocity looks almost constant this means vc is constant this means d phi by dr should go over should go as 1 by r so that r r cancels which means phi should be log r so now if you substitute phi over here you would get your VCS constant. So this is how we model the dark matter distribution in our galaxy in a very simplistic case as log of R. But this is not quite the realistic case as we will discuss in our further lectures. So let's now study some applications of the circular velocity. So A part, let's consider a point mass and we know the gravitation given by a point mass is minus G over R. If you try to calculate the circular velocity using the formula that was shown in last uh, on last page, you would get your VC as this. Just in, so this is called Keplerian uh, velocity curve because the velocity curve goes as one over under root R. And this is what Kepler had actually observed for the planets which were revolving around the sun, right? And as an exercise, you can try to calculate density using Poisson equation given the phi. Right. Now the second case, it's the homogeneous sphere. So a sphere with constant density, whose mass at a given radius would be given by this, right? The mass contained within the R would be given by this formula right here. Now you can try and calculate phi given this density using Poisson equation again. So this is again an exercise and you would find the circular velocity is directly proportional to radius. So this is direct. So this is very much in contrast with what we have before. That as you go away in the radius, the velocity, 
the circular velocity of an object increases, right? You can also try and calculate the orbital time period of any object which is in the circular, uh, which is uh, on the circular orbit using this trivial formula 2 pi r by bc, right? Uh, now, suppose you have an homo you have a homogeneous sphere of radius r naught, right? And there is an object that sits right here at a distance r, okay? And you leave it from rest, okay? You were holding it and you just leave it right there. So this object right here would go under harmonic oscillations, okay? You can see it mathematically here. So if you try to write an equation of it, it's d square r by dt square equals the force which is minus gm over r in our case which is minus 4 pi g over 3 r right and now since and which becomes since this right here it's constant right it becomes minus k r okay so this, this equation, I hope it reminds you of harmonic oscillator. The one dimensional harmonic oscillator was d square x by dt square equals minus kx. So if you just leave it, it has no initial motion. This object would go as harm, would, would, would go under harmonic oscillations, right? And yes, so, and this is what is uh, expected also. So for this homogeneous sphere, you can uh, give a density right and for density as an exercise you can try and calculate potential I've given the solution here using Poisson equation again okay now in in the previous two cases uh, the orbit would be elliptical uh, right because it's, a, it's, a, it's these are spherical systems so we expect elliptical orbits Moving on, we have isochrone potential and its potential profile is given by this. The importance of this potential right here is that at r equals zero, the potential doesn't diverge, right? So in, in previous cases, right here at r equal to zero, potential diverged to infinity. And you will find here as well that at r equals at r equals zero, the potential would diverge. But right here at r equal to zero or at very small r the potential remains constant and at very large r it again follows the Keplerian uh, potential distribution right so you can try and calculate the circular velocity for this isochrome potential right here which you will find as this with a given as under root b squared plus r squared so as you can see right here for very very large r the circular velocity would go as 1 over under root r you can check this which is again the keplerian potential the the, Ke the keplerian velocity curve that we we've just discussed okay now as an exercise again given the potential uh, it's a very straightforward exercise and you can do this in spherical coordinates the most it would be most easy to do so you can calculate the density for a given isochrone potential, the density distribution of such a system. As an exercise, you can try and do that, right? Okay, so now let's go, now let's do a numerical. Uh, so the numerical is that show that the potential energy of a spherical system is given by this thing right here. So this is the work done in bringing the system together. So bringing the, all the masses from infinity uh, to make it a system is given by minus g by 2 0 to infinity m square r over r square dr you can pause the video right here just to solve it by yourself I'll discuss it anyway okay so Right, so we will we would need a couple of formulas for this. First is that we would need Poisson equation. The second is that we would need the first step to solve this problem, which is if you remember for continuous system, the potential energy of the system is given by one over two integral of rho x phi x d cube x. Okay. Now, if you use Poisson equation right here, if you convert this density to potential, this is what this term would look like. Okay, now I want to get rid of this del square phi phi and I want to convert it to del phi whole square. Okay, this term. So let's see how I do that. 
So let's consider this term and take its divergence and using simple uh, chain formula in, uh, in derivatives we would get the del would act on this term first multiplied by this and then del would act on this multiplied by this which would give you a square. Now let's take a volume integral of this equation right here okay and these terms are left as it is and then using Gauss theorem I can convert this divergence term into a sphere uh, uh, into a surface integral term right and since this surface integral it's taken on the boundaries and the boundaries exist at r equals infinity and we know that at r equal to infinity phi vanishes at r equal to infinity phi becomes zero so this this surface integral becomes zero at the boundaries which exist at infinity so this term right here is zero so since this plus this equals zero this means that this term basically becomes negative of this term now coming back to this equation right here and using this fact that we have just evaluated i can convert this term as this term right using this fact now we know that since it's a spherical system so phi would depend only on r right so, so I'm converting the Cartesian coordinates to spherical coordinates over here. So my volume integral basically becomes 4 pi r square dr with r integrated from 0 to infinity, right? And when phi and theta are integrated, you get 4 pi, okay? And then this right here, it's simplified further, okay? Moving on, just one more thing to make use of the fact that in the question is given it's a spherical system. So rho r is given by m r over 4 by 3 pi r cube and the Poisson equation that we have, right? So I can convert this rho, so I can try and evaluate rho in terms of this. Now I want to know the value of d phi by dr, right? Because in my last equation, I have d phi by dr. So I want to evaluate d phi by dr and see what, what, what w looks like, okay? So now I'm trying to get d5 by dr in terms of mr, okay. Sorry, my battery is a little low. Yep. Okay, so using Poisson equation and spherical coordinates, we have this equation right here. So I'm bringing everything on the right hand side, right? And this is d of this equals this. Now if I take the, take the integral from 0 to r on this side and this side, so this uh, this would give me mr so the volume integral of density would give me mr and the volume integral of uh, it's not the volume integral it's basically the radial integral but rho r using 4 pi I would convert it to volume integral to get mr and this right here would remain as it is when I'll integrate it over r right so I get my d5 by dr as gm over r square now I'll substitute this d5 by dr into my previous equation and then it's then it's a trivial as you can already start to see that this resembles what we wanted to show right so the potential energy of a spherical system is given by minus g by 2 integral of 0 to infinity m square over r square dr okay so I hope you guys understood this numericals and uh, what velocity curve is and what are the kind of potentials that we would be dealing with and the density distribution and etc okay thank you